Um, so you're just going to get bullet points tonight about me because there's so much to tell. Uh, I am the older middle child from eight adopted children that all came from different ethnic backgrounds. And while you would think that that should be a beautiful thing, it really wasn't. It caused a lot of strife in our lives. And I suffered every form of abuse at the hands of my older siblings. Physical, mental, emotional, and sexual. All the way up until I was 11 years old when my parents finally found out and made big changes in our lives to try to protect me. But it continued through school and bullying, um, getting chased home by kids with baseball bats and all kinds of trauma. Um, after high school, things started to get a little bit better in college. I got mixed up with fraternities, got into drinking, alcohol poisoning in the hospital a few times. Nothing super bad at that point, and my life ended up dragging me out to California. I was, I was born and raised in New England, um, but I ended up in California, sunny Napa, California, beautiful, and life was finally doing good. And then I came down with a brain tumor, and the surgery to save my life because they didn't know what the heck it was from the scans left me quadriplegic and clinically depressed. So I had a battle to learn how to walk and use my arms again. And that went super quick and actually pretty easy. But the battle in my brain took over a decade. And at its worst, I was homeless, unemployed for three years, battling suicide and depression. I was almost 300 pounds. Life was crap, you know. Um, just full of trauma. And in 2015, I got a job at an Amazon warehouse, finally. Started to pick up the pieces of my life. And I met this girl there who was a Wiccan, and she introduced me to crystals. She was the one who helped me discover that I was an empath, which helped me understand myself a bit more um, and what all my trouble, what the root of some of my troubles were, taking on people's energy the way that I did. She introduced me to crystals for protection, and that started the whole spiritual awakening and me going down all my rabbit holes um, and learning and growing and evolving. And I started studying Reiki and that led to a whole new experience for me. And then I started having visions in my dreams. I Visions for me, they come in my dreams. And at first I wasn't sure what it was, but it was the runes is what it turned out to be. And that led me down more rabbit holes, more learning, more studies. I got into meditation, Reiki, crystals, runes. It started to all come together for me through these visions of this process. And it took me almost five years to develop this process through my own healing journey. Um, but I love it because the whole intention is my whole life, like I suffered for a reason because I have that intimacy with trauma that most people don't with everything that I have been through. I've been through something similar to what almost anybody else has been through. And it allows me to connect more deeply to help people clear and heal in this process that I've developed using all the different modalities that I've been learning makes it so much more powerful that for the last nine months we've been doing it as a nine week journey one session per week and that was mostly because I was still working in corporate and you know I had my nine to five I only had so many days a week I could do the healing job but 
it worked out so great and it was so powerful I love it and now I get to do it on a group level the hard part for me learning to do it on the group level is my process is very personalized to a person's individual needs um, so making that work on a group level was really hard for me to figure out for so long but now here we are is there anybody else in the waiting room nobody else in the waiting room so yes for those of you who aren't familiar with runes I'm going to share my screen now and get my presentation up so this is our agenda for the night we just did the meet host we're going to learn a little bit about the earth star chakra and discover your happy healing space we're going to learn a bit about Yggdrasil, Vatataskar, the runes, the grids, and the style that I make them in which is so unique and so different uh, and the crystals and then we're going to get into that healing experience so whoops we've already learned about me perception is nine tenths of our truth that is a quote by me I am very fond of saying that because it is perception is a choice it's not always consciously a choice in that immediate moment but we choose how we perceive things and when we look back into our pasts we can change it and transmute it and sometimes we need help doing that that's okay that's what healers like me are for and we're going to work on that tonight so starts with you and starts with me but when we work together we can all be free and we can do so much greater healing so the earth star the earth star chakra is one of two external chakras and a lot of people don't teach or even know about this because it is an external chakra it's not part of the body it's below the feet like the soul star that is above the head and you can't heal those two directly they're part they're the north and south pole the earth star is the south pole of our electric electromagnetic field and it drives us towards our sole purpose in this life the earth star and the soul star you can't heal them directly their power and their strength is affected by the overall balance of your inner chakras so even some healers that do know about them don't bother to work with them because you can't heal them directly and that is a horrible shame because even though you can't heal them directly you can still impact them and you can still tap into their purpose and their power and that's what tonight's journey is about is using that earth star chakras power to guide us towards our purpose and when we're not in full good balance it guides us towards healing that will help us so we can find our purpose so the journey is going to be a three-part process first we're going to visit our happy healing spaces oh. and can you help us we've all been trying to let Michael know that he's muted Michael I, and by the way I was on a sitting on a Google meet for like 15 minutes I didn't even realize there was a zoom call oh man yeah yeah, no, we were talking, he was good earlier, and then he did something, and it totally shifted his audio. Yeah, I know, we've, we've tried, I've, we've, we've tried quite literally everything except for Morse code, which I don't know. I have his cell phone number, I texted him earlier, let's see if I can get him. Yeah, I, th I think what he did was he shared the screen, and now his presentation is in front of probably everything else. So he probably can't see anything else. What happened was when he adjusted his mic, it like silenced it. Oh, uh, yeah. I've had friends do that before. And like I tried commenting for Michael in like the event and I like private message him. But I think he must have everything like on silent since he's presenting. 
of course. Yeah. And I tried to put this over the screen. I saw we're doing all the things. <laughs> and it's a bummer because the information is really great, but it's also like a lot to take in when reading off the slide. I'd love to be hearing him. Yeah, I can guess just from talking to him a little bit that this is like, this is like straight from Odin. This information that he's presenting. Yeah. This is yeah, this is so exciting and important. I'm so sad that he doesn't know where else. It's so bummer. Yeah. What's going on? Oh, there he is. We have to just... hear you. Huh? You were muted for like probably six minutes. Oh, God. I just joined because I was on a Google Meet. I thought this was a Google Meet until like, I don't know, probably right when you muted, I joined. <laughs> so I might have hit the wrong thing and muted myself. Huh. When you adjusted your headset, it accidentally went out. Oh. You yeah, wiggled it? Yeah, I had a a thing from my headset telling me it was going to shut off, so I had to hit a button to stop it from doing that. And it must have muted me too. Darn, darn, darn. Um, so you guys missed a whole lot. Was it was crazy. literally when you started your presentation. Crikey. Is that why you were raising your hand? Yeah. Yeah, we were. We tried everything to get your attention. Uh, <laughs> I even put a note up. Yeah. Oh, I didn't even see that. I saw the the hand raise thing, but um, I've never done full screen presentation in Zoom before, so I don't see anything else. Oy, 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 oy. But you guys can at least read the slides. Uh, yeah. Some some of it. We were. I I personally was focused a lot on trying to get your attention, <laughs> um, but also I read slow. <laughs> so okay. let me back up. And it was after that slide. It was like, yeah, it was after this. After this one. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah, it was here. Yep. That seems about right. All right. So what you missed is a little bit about the happy healing space. Um, think of myself as Bob Ross of healers because a lot of what we do is very visualization in painting a picture. Um, in your happy healing space, if you're not new to meditation, you probably already have one, you just don't call it that. That's my little um, signature name for it, is that place inside your mind that you go to when you meditate. You hold it dear in your heart, and it is a place of peace and joy, and it could be whatever you wish, good nature, some place that's real that you visited or completely made up. The main picture there is actually a representation of my personal happy healing space. It was a very peaceful blue lagoon in the middle of verdant rainforest with a beautiful waterfall. And a little island in the center that I go to to meditate at. Uh, so that's your happy healing space. And during the journey, when I mentioned going to your happy healing space, that's where you're going to go. Yours is... Like I said, whatever you want, tie it to you. Um, so, Idrisil, I was talking about Idrisil. It is the world tree, it is Norse mythology. There is not a vast amount written about the world tree. Um, it's hey, pretty Michael, can you, is everybody else having a, like a hard time hearing him still? It's a little like low, the volume. Yeah. Yes. Like, I don't know if you just need to project more or turn up your mic or something, but um, I'm having a little a hard time. Thank you. Okay. Your magic's so powerful, but Zoom just can't <laughs> handle it. Can you hear me better now? I would just say if you're, if you got it in you, man, like, like, Imagine you're shouting, and to us, that will probably sound. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Cool. Anyway, Yggdrasil, the world tree, it's home to many or several different 
mystical creatures and beings. Radictoskar is one that we are going to visit to see if he has a message for you. The dragon Needhogger, the eagle Redolfner, and the stags Dane, Valen, Dunir, and Durthor. And then the Norns, which are essentially, you can think of them as the Norse version of the Three Fates. Uh, it also is said to bear the nine worlds between its branches, nestled in its trees and trunk. I don't actually believe this is a physical cosmology of the nine worlds aspect. Um, it's very vague, but it's very themic. Every world has this theme around it, what little is told out there. And I'm researching currently for an article that I'll be posting on LinkedIn when it's done, um, where I believe this is actually intended to speak of an inner world cosmology that they just didn't have the language that we have today to describe it in the same way that these nine worlds are actually our nine chakras. Uh, so, Ratataska. Not Ratatouille, Ratataska. He runs up and down the world tree, bringing messages between the dragon and the eagle. And these are not nice messages. He is fanning the flames of the feud between the two. And what you do read about Ryder Toskar makes him out to be not such a nice guy, but he's just a messenger. And that doesn't mean he's not a nice guy, even though maybe he might get some enjoyment out of it. When we go to see him, he sometimes can be a little cheeky, and he may have a message for you. So we'll find out. Um, so the runes and the runa, as I was talking about when I finally found out that you weren't hearing me. Um, so the mythology states that Odin speared himself and hung himself in order to learn the power of the runes. Mythology comes from some sort of foundation of truth, and the truth that I've learned through my work with spirit is Odin was a real person in the Stone Age between 15,000 and 20,000 years ago. And he was a tribal leader that was defeated in battle for his position, hung from a tree in shame to bleed out slowly from the wound that he received. And it was in that euphoria of dying that he attracted the attention of an energy being who was wandering the universe exploring. And that vibration attracted him they bonded with him, healed him, and gave him power because they were curious about humanity. They wanted to help humanity to grow and evolve. And ultimately, humanity got their part of them, you know, because what do we do? We war and battle, and they didn't care for that, so they broke the bond and they sort of went hiding off, waiting for us to grow and evolve to come back. So the runes are not actually a alphabet like most scholars believe and teach. They are more like a hieroglyph that is a representation of the runa, of their name, and the power that they draw on. The ones we are using tonight are Elhaz for protection. Otala Anzus helps us connect to ancient wisdom. So Wilo Isa Ewas Garido is successful, focused, spiritual journey. And Uru's Fehuunyo is for manifesting love to help us heal in the healing portion towards the end of the journey. This is my layout for the crystal grid. It is not the same as most grids. This is a unique gridding style that I am actually seeking the patent on, so I can't tell you all the details, but it doesn't follow sacred geometry, it follows sacred numerology, and the bind room 
of the rooms that we just went over is going to be a part of it. Um, so nine worlds and chakras, nine rooms and nine different types of crystal all go into the layout. And then sometimes there are supporting crystals around the outer edge, as you can see. The crystals that we're using tonight are orange kyanite, citron, petrified wood, selenite, sunstone, mutilated quartz, cranite, magnetite, amethyst, and clear quartz. All of these have different uses for manifesting, connecting to spirit, for healing, um, and for guiding. So, that was actually, for the most part, the end of the presentation. We can get into the healing experience. Who is ready? All right, let me stop sharing the screen. So, I'm going to make you guys a little bit sort of busy for a moment. Moving the camera around so you can get see. So, this is how I do a layout. This is how I do a layout when I'm working um, distance for people. So Please tell me that's not your coffee table. Huh? Is that your no, coffee table? No, it's a massage table. Okay. It's like it's in front of your TV. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. hoping that's setting drinks on that. The Yeti cooler is the coffee table. This is okay, okay table. good. <laughs> this is a massage table uh, <laughs> with a pro uh, proxy that represents all the chakras and my basic layout. And down at the down at the edge is the grid sitting at the place of the Earth Star chakra for the proxy. That is, that is beautiful. So most healers that I've seen anyway for distance, um, they like to have their camera pointed down at the proxy. Perspective is everything to me. So I put my camera on the proxy where it would be so that your view is going to be watching me as I do my work above you. Um, so that said, if you all wouldn't mind muting yourselves, if you haven't already, go ahead and get comfortable. Um, if you know what the box breath is, that is how I like to start people off. If you don't know what the box breath is, that is where you breathe for you breathe in for three to five seconds hold that breath for three to five seconds breathe out for three to five seconds hold it for three to five seconds and for those four sides of breathe in hold breathe out hold repeat five seconds is preferable Start with that box breath, and I'll get incense burning. Just to relax. While you're focused on that box breath, making sure that you can learn, I want you to start to visualize whatever physical tension you have. Rolling off, melting away, running at the top of your crown, down through your forehead. through your cheeks, down to your jaw, down to your neck, 
sonhos. Tanto eu te steady you let your mind wander and start to carry you to that happy feeling space. For a moment, just explore it. Wander around. Is it favorite notes and things? As you do so, pick your fingers up. something a little bit off in the distance, in the field, that draws your attention. And as you get closer, you realize it's a door, standing upright, Approach the door and open it. And through the door, you just see more of the fluid on the other side. Big 
And as you walk along, you notice the wind seems to pick up. It gets pushing you and gently nudging you in a particular direction. You feel a whispering as if someone calling you this way, this way. Springs draw your curiosity, and the wind nudges you faster. Massive trees and grow up of every kind and color, like a great wall before you. You hear whispering again this way, this way. The trees creak and bend as if bowing to you, and a path opens before you into the woods. You go and flow. No more slow. Curious. 
small and good, vibrant colors. The teeming life in every tree and every plant all around you. Place your hand on the root, tracing it, walking towards the trunk of the tree. Thanks, girl. I'm running over to you. Children and speaking. Pay attention now he's returning as he comes to you from the tree above or the ground below. The tree above, your answer comes from the people. returns to you and chills. Let me give you an answer. You don't know what you call it. It's a code. 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 It's a code.
Treating the prayers looks away from me and see if I'm fast to run. You find yourself in a void. Some of them need to be Self is there before you, reliving this pain. I want you to go to them. I want you to grab them by the hand. I want you to put them back to your happy feelings. It's okay. It's not a permanent thing. It's completely allowed. You can have as many versions of yourself in your happy space as you wish to be. Remember, it is your space.
I want you to tell him, specifically tell them this, tell them I am so sorry you went through this horrible time. It's okay because I believe in you. It's okay because I am stronger because of you. It's okay because I feel so much love for you. It's okay because I do accept you. It's okay because I love when you help make me hurt. It's okay because I speak more confidently thanks to you. It's okay because I see what a treasure you are. It's okay because I understand you and I are one. It's okay because I have faith in us. And then I want you to give them the biggest, strongest hug you've ever given anyone in your life. This is our space. Because they are you. And they can come back here at any time.
How does everybody feel? Does anybody want to share what they experienced and felt? Feel free to unmute and speak if you want. Um, I don't know about you all, but whenever, typically whenever I'm able to get into a deep meditative state like that, um, I will see a, like, I will actually see a white light outline of my third eye appear and then sort of move off into the distance. Um, and today, for the first time ever, um, it was like a perfect circle. And I had a knowing that it was an owl's eye, which is interesting because in all of my investigations and dances with spirit animals, the owl has never showed up for me. Um, so that's definitely a new spirit companion for me to investigate, which I, I would not have known to do so without this journey. Uh, I, I believe that was Rat, um, Rat Orozco's message for me. Did anybody actually receive a message that they remember? A lot of people don't, so that's okay. Hey, so um, that was quite the trip. Um, I couldn't hear everything you were saying, but like it just took me anywhere, anyway. Um, I like had like a deep remembering of like my Norse lives that I lived in and existed. Um, and that was very interesting. Um, had a, a little bit of scary stuff come up that was like past life that I needed to like remember to heal and things like that. Um, it was interesting you said that about the owl because I had my third eye at one point where it was like deep indigo blue, like almost like eyeliner and I saw an owl too and I've never had that before. So that's really interesting. We both had that same experience. Um, it was also very strange because I could feel my feet moving 
and I couldn't stop them when we were like walking to the woods and running to the woods. And I also felt like I actually couldn't even move my body. I was very aware of feelings in my body and I could feel sensations. But like until a certain point, I couldn't open my eyes or move any of my like hands or feet, which was super weird for me. I've never experienced that. But it was very interesting. So thank you so much. <laughs> that is interesting experience. I've never had anybody experience um, not being able to move the body. Um, usually people are getting uh, warm sensations, feelings of comfort. Um, but yeah, never, that's, that's pretty intense. Alright, so, give me one moment here. I am trimming down the list from who all was actually showed up. Okay, Package journey. I'm giving away a free solo session, and I'm giving away a free nine days accelerated trial. So, as I was mentioning, um, the nine week journey is not actually what I've been wanting to do. It's always been, I wanted to do it as a nine day journey. But my other obligations in corporate, I didn't have the time to be able to do that. So I spread it out one session a week, it became a nine week journey, which actually in some ways is a little bit better because you get those days to integrate the healing. Um, but for anybody who's interested, wants to, uh, uh, Sorry, voice is getting a little raw. For anybody who wants to experience the rapid acceleration, I have the nine day trials getting ready to start now. Um, the cost is four ninety nine seventy five, but so let me get back into let me take out. So, so four ninety nine seventy five covers the cost of all the supplies and everything to do a journey for somebody. Um, but it's going to be a rapid acceleration. Alright, so rapid acceleration, nine day trial journey, and I am giving the option of two days off integration for people who may want that if nine straight days in a row is too much. Um, who is interested, raise your hand if you want potentially to win one of those for free. I would be, except I'm about to go on like a massive extended travel and road trip and I have no idea what my calendar and schedule is going to be. Understood, understood. I think Denise was interested in that though. If I recall, is she still there? All right, well, I'm going to do the random generator. 
and C, and whoever wins. Where is the result? Oh, there it is. Jessica. Jessica, I believe you came from LinkedIn, so you can message me on LinkedIn or email me through the email to reply. We can set up for that nine-day journey, and we can schedule that around the weekend or whatever. We can start at any time. And then the nine-week journey where it's one day a week. Um, <clears throat> so nine-week journey is going to be, it's one session a week. Um, the sessions are, by the way, 90 minutes, so you get much more deeper journey. They are one-to-one, -one, private, um, much more detail oriented around all your needs and healing desires. Very highly personalized journey. So Jessica already won. And we can set this up for any time that works for you as well. And Lindsay. Yay, thank you. I'm so stoked. All right. And then lastly, for free solo session. Do, 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 do you spin the wheel? Jamie. Yay. Thank you very much. Right. So, very Jamie, grateful. I believe you, you found me on through LinkedIn also. Uh, through Ryan, actually. So you can message me there or you can reply to the email and we'll set up a solo session for that. Now, for those of you that didn't win, um, discounts, 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 and solo sessions in 64% off, 50% uh, off for a nine week journey and a 20% off, which takes $100 off for the nine days trial. So you can still get it at only $300. And I'm gonna post links for that into the chat group. And I'll send it out in the thank you email afterwards as well. So you all can take advantage of it through there. Um, I'm going to keep these discounts up for the registered people through the end of the month. And after that, they'll go away. And it is now a little after 9, 9.15, 9.17. Um, sorry for running a little bit late because of technical difficulties that I didn't catch on to because I didn't have chat up. I see that you guys were putting it in chat. I feel so bad. Um, but if anybody has any questions, wants to do a little Q&A through chat, I will stay up for a little bit longer and we can answer questions if you're curious about any aspects that I didn't go into very deeply during the presentation. Anyone? I got Thank you, Michael. You're the man. We'll talk sometime next Wednesday. Wednesday. Yes, Wednesday. Bye, right, brother. Peace. Have a good night. Have a good night. Lindsay or Jessica, either of you have any questions? No, I just wanted to say thank you for that. And um, I have to go too. That was a beautiful session. I appreciate it. And I'll be contacting you, sir. Have a wonderful evening. All right. Thank you. Good night.
It is down to you. It is down to me. Any questions, Lindsay? Um, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, because my screen did something really funky, and I don't know how to get out of it. <laughs> so I wasn't sure if I was going through. Um, first of all, thank you so much for the session. I'm so excited for that. Um, do you think there is any significance you found with the owls in like Norse culture that maybe is why that came up for me and I believe it was Ryan? I don't know off the top of my head. Um, okay. <laughs> I, I don't recall anything owl related significantly. There's a ton with wolves and ravens. It's not to say I could do some research and look it up, but uh, I don't know. Um, I, I totally understand that. That is interesting about the ravens, though, because one of my spirit guides is a raven, so that makes a lot of sense now. <laughs> well, there's Odin's ravens, um, Munir and Dunir, which are wisdom and thought. Um, but owls, there might be, but I can't recall having read or seen anything um, specifically. But I will say, although a lot of what I do has those roots with Norse culture, it's not strictly Norse. Um, and this could be a message or something from any spirit guide for you from any kind of background, not necessarily Norse. That makes sense as well. All right. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate that. And um, your presentation was amazing. The energy work was amazing. You could deeply, deeply feel it like on an energetic soul level. So um, thank you so much for everything. You're welcome. I'm so glad you could make it. You have a great night. You too. And don't forget to reach out for your free journey. I will do, will do that. I'm so stoked. <laughs> thank you. All right. Bye. Bye.